we had some technical difficulties. Um, I'm Nancy Mader here at the Federation for Children with Special Needs. I'm the director of our transition projects, and I'm here with Kristen Humphrey, the director of mentoring for um, Partners for Youth with Disabilities, or PYD. So today we're talking about mentoring. Um, I asked Kristen to come and talk about mentoring because I think that it is crucial for young people to have some services set up before they leave high school. Mm -hmm. I always talk about it as a retirement plan. Um, and I think that mentoring is a piece that we often forget about that is really important for young people to interact with, one, their peers, because some of the mentors also have disabilities, and two, peers without disabilities. So I'm going to let uh, Kristen introduce herself and talk a little bit about PYD, and then we're going to go into mentoring. Great. Well, thank you so much for having me here, Nancy. I really appreciate the opportunity to share more about mentoring. And as Nancy mentioned, I direct the mentoring program at Partners for Youth with Disabilities. And that was actually the very first program at Partners for Youth with Disabilities. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's our cornerstone. <laughs> and uh, for just brief background on uh, PYD, we started back in 1985, so even before the Americans with Disabilities right. Act, and it started when Regina Snowden, who is our founder, and still to this day, right. our executive right. director, so a lifelong passion. Um, so Regina was working in a mentoring program and was getting a lot of phone calls from parents of youth with disabilities and youth with disabilities who were being turned away from other mentoring programs and really looking for that as a form of support. Right. So she started out by including nine youth with disabilities in her program and matching them with nine adults who shared a similar disability. Okay. And that was really, that took off immediately. A lot of the, the mentees had never even met an adult with their similar disability right. and it really showed them you can be successful, you can have a job, a future, and just that connection was so important. Um, but because it was meeting such a high need, the wait list quickly ballooned and right. grew because uh, there were still very few programs doing that. So over time, in addition to the one-to-one -one mentoring program, PYD has developed group programs. So we also have a group program that focuses on theater, for youth and young adults ages 14 to 22. We have a career readiness program and that takes place in some of the school systems and in the community where they work on transition to work skills, uh, job shadowing, and there's mentoring component as well with guest lectures. And then we have an online mentoring program that is focused on career readiness and not limited by geography because it's online. And then we also have a side of PYD that does training and technical assistance for other organizations that right. want to become more inclusive. Um, so overall, our mission is to empower youth with disabilities through transformative mentoring, youth development opportunities, and inclusion expertise. Uh, and our goal is to motivate youth to reach their full potential for their personal goals, educational goals, and uh, career goals so they can lead lives that are filled with dignity, pride, right. and purpose. Right. That's awesome. I love hearing that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about like what mentoring is, because I have an idea of it, but I think that what you guys do is a little bit different. Yeah, that's a great question. And mentoring, especially now, is a term that gets thrown around a lot. There's right. so many different types of mentoring programs. So in our particular case, we think of it as a, a structured relationship that's trusting between a caring adult. And our particular model is a one-to-one -one community based mentoring okay. program. So uh, that is different from their site base where they might happen at one location every time. Right. Uh, there are therapeutic mentoring programs, which we often get youth referred who might be in a therapeutic program. So it can be a nice compliment, but uh, oftentimes that's more short term, whereas ours is a, a year commitment once a mentee is matched with a mentor. Okay. And the basic structure is that they would talk once a week through phone, email, texting, FaceTime, any, as the technology evolves, right, however right. they want to have that regular communication. 
and then they meet for four to six hours a month okay. for an in-person activity. Okay. And that is at a time and a place of their choosing, so it's very flexible. They could do a few hours every other week. They could do a longer visit once a month. Uh, but that's really the basic criteria. And when POID was developing our program, we structured it in accordance to the elements of effective practice. So okay. that is something that Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, produced based on research on best practices. So they outline uh, recommendations for recruitment, screening, training, right. monitoring, and support closure and evaluation, and so um, we've also really benefited from being part of Mass Mentoring Partnerships Network. Right. We're uh, an inaugural member of their quality-based mentoring program in 2008, so we really benefit from learning about their trainings and resources around best practices in the field. Great. So why should parents or students, young people of transition age, um, work with um, mentoring? Why should they be interested or looking at thinking about mentoring for their young people? Yeah, well, I think honestly everyone could use a mentor all yes. throughout any age, <laughs> and transition in particular right. is such a challenging time. And right. really, what's great about mentoring is it's so unique to each match. So even though there's overarching themes, it can really be driven by what the mentee wants. Right. So for our particular program, our five overarching goal areas are self-esteem, healthy relationships, independent living, community okay. involvement, and education slash vocation. So as a, when a mentee comes into the program, we ask them about their interests, their preferences, any goal areas, and they can share if there's something within those areas they want to work on and they might not know right away so it's right. not so formalized that they have to report x number of goals okay. but we really it's more developmental where we focus on the relationship but we train mentors in those areas and give mentees background that the mentor is there to be right. a resource and then as they get to know each other they can pick what's most important to them. So okay. uh, it is really broad. A mentee might come in knowing they want to work on a career goal. And with the mentor, maybe they focus on mock interviews or right. maybe they look for jobs together. And the fact that that relationship is so structured with the weekly contact, it right. really helps with the SMART goals. Of right. It can be by the time we talk next week, look up three jobs that you might want right. to apply for. Right. Uh, or even when you think about their meeting in the community, so if independent living is a goal, maybe they want to work on using the tea together right. and they practice going on the orange line to get to an activity in Assembly right. Square, let's right. say, around right. the corner, so they can <laughs> work on those real-world world skills together. As together part of without their parent right. or a teacher, like someone mm -hmm. who is um, just part of their life, which right. I think is so like really empowering. Like, yeah. it's not my mom taking me on the tea or my dad or my teacher or paraprofessional. Mm -hmm. This is someone who's in my life. Absolutely. It's such a unique relationship right. that is really important. Right. So what are, because I have frequently asked questions about mentoring and what you guys do. So what are some frequently asked questions that you guys Yeah, get? so I think a lot of the questions are, what is a mentor and a mentee? What do they do together when they spend time? Right. And so our program is based on a best fit model. So okay. we interview the mentees and the mentors to learn more about their personality, their interests, what they like to do for fun what do they want to get out of the mentoring right. program? What are they looking for in a match? And so it really does run the gamut. It, it's very broad and it's in the community. So we try to pair people based on similar interests, personality, and best fit based on what each of them are looking for. So in terms of the question, what do they do together? It could be anything from going to the aquarium. It could be cooking together. It could be working on 
a career goal. And sometimes you might get an interesting case where uh, the mentee is in high school studying for an exam and the mentor is in grad school, so they can be accountability partners and <laughs> study together yeah. in the library, yeah. have that company. Right. Uh, it might be fitness goals and uh, a lot of times cooking can be a fun thing to work on. So it's very broad. And then also the social activities of going to right. the movies, going for a walk together. Right. And uh, we do serve youth and young adults ages 6 to 24 in our community-based program. Okay. So that's really broad. Uh, okay. The online program goes up to 26, but it really, um, yeah, there's so much that they can do together and it's really unique to each match. Right. right. And the online program is where you guys can serve people statewide, where like the in person is within the 128 belt. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, so the online program is for young adults 18 to 26, and that is focused on career readiness. So, and actually, a youth could do both in person and online, depending okay. on where they live, but the online is not limited by geography. And so, some components of that program include that there are monthly webinars that focus on career readiness topics. Okay. So for example, this week we had a webinar on financial literacy and it's a group model. So okay. mentors and mentees can share together right. um, disclosure, workplace culture, right. um, careers that you might not have thought of. We'll do panels on that. Right. And so that's one component of it. There's also forums within the site where you can post different career topics of interest. So what about, what do you look for in a workplace? What do you think of remote work culture? Right. What are some productivity hacks? So you can really post anything, right. any questions you have. And the mentors are coming from a variety of fields, a variety of locations. And then there's also prompts within the site. So a mentor and mentee, if they wanted to, work on interviewing, there's a section where they can pick questions that are beginner, intermediate, advanced, okay. so that it kind of gives more structure to working on right. those goals. Right. So that's a great way to really work on those skills and, and find someone in your career field, network right. with other mentors, mentees, that, that having that network is a huge part of it. It's great because that's oftentimes how you get a job is knowing right. somebody in the field or knowing somebody who knows you're looking for a job and mm -hmm. you know they can connect you that way. So that's great for young people, especially yeah. when they're looking for that entry level job. Absolutely. So to get. Yeah, <laughs> it's huge thinking yeah. about those networks. Yep. Yep. So let me ask you, how are mentors found and then do they go through a training? Yeah, that's a great question. Maybe we'll find some from this live chat, hopefully. Uh, but we recruit on a, a wide range of ways. So we are on different volunteer databases like Volunteer Match, and we're connected with Mass Mentoring, uh, Mentor the National Mentoring Partnership. So sometimes it's online searches. Sometimes it's word of mouth um, from other participants who have been in the program. And then we also being in the Boston area, there's so many colleges, so we'll actively right. recruit at fairs, and this tends to be a very uh, busy time for that. Right. And then also we'll host different events too. So uh, actually this past Saturday, we had a career mentor brunch, and that was open to both uh, active matches, waitlisted mentees, and then community members who might want to find out about it. So that's kind of a good way where they're mentoring for a day. So we covered topics like elevator pitches and yes. interview skills. And then the mentees were paired with a mentor for a day to practice some of those skills. Okay. So it, events like that hopefully also helps for people who are interested to learn more. Right. So they come from a wide range of places. And then we're always looking to recruit more mentors with disabilities. So being connected to the different right. disability commissions and collaborating agencies is really helpful for that. And then in terms of the process, um, since we're structured according to the elements of effective practice, we do do uh, interviews with federal and state background checks right. for mentors, three reference checks, and then they do a mandatory in-person training. But then we also offer monthly trainings on a variety right. of topics. So we have mentor community forums for additional resources, and those are 
more kind of based on the needs of the match. So something right. like financial literacy, they'd have access to that training if that's a goal. Right. Something like bullying, self-care, right. uh, disclosure. So there's a lot of different training resources that we can provide them once they're matched. And okay. then they also have a mentoring specialist who's there for ongoing support for okay. the mentor and the mentee. And um, and then we have events throughout the year. So we'll have a right. mentor appreciation night coming up soon, okay. which is our biggest event to celebrate yeah. the amazing dedication of the volunteers and the participants right. and transition events like the career brunch, um, right. stress management workshop throughout the year. That's awesome. So let me ask you, Kristen, I like, so I'm a transition person. So I always think about like the lifelong benefits of something mm -hmm. um, and the lifelong benefits of mentoring and how many like, What's your experience with mentors and mentees continuing with a relationship even after like one year is done? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's really um, so interesting, I'm sure, for Regina to see since she right. started it. So right. with some of the mentees who were young, now she sees them as successful leaders right. in the community. Uh, and a term that she calls grand partners, where a lot of the mentored youth will become mentors right. themselves. So there are some examples of intergenerational matches, right. which is really great to yeah. see. And actually, statistically, um, the National Mentoring Partnership did produce a national study, and it found that youth who are mentored are more likely to become mentors themselves. Right. So when you... Right know how much of a benefit it is, you're more likely to want to give that back. So that's right. really a lifelong benefit of how right. mentoring kind of perpetuates a cycle right. of mentoring. Right, you're involved which in is, your community. Right, exactly. So, um, and then in terms of, I'd say about um, half continue to go beyond the one-year commitment, and then there's a range where some have been involved for a decade and a lot of them might also just continue in an informal way so they they've had this year in a very structured relationship but then they can kind of restructure it and decide what works for their schedule and the positive thing is that a lot of times is because the mentee is involved with work and programs right. and benefiting right. in so many ways right. that they might be busier so the nature of their relationship changes, but they still have this connection and right. support. Um, and especially with the career mentoring program too, we talk about that even after the the official match might be over, remembering that this is a person who's invested in you and thinking right. about their network. So giving right. them updates later on right. on your career search and, and just keeping that in mind that yeah. you have this large network and, and sometimes it's just a matter of realizing the yeah. people that are there that right. could be supporting you. Do you find, so PYD, and I think a lot of these agencies that offer mentoring, that if they get involved with mentoring, they get involved with other aspects of the agency, like youth group or, you know, whatever else there is going on. It's just kind of a gateway into doing other things in, your, in the community and in your agency. Yeah, that does happen a lot. And even it's interesting, too, I feel like with stat, we'll have AmeriCorps positions right, and right, a lot of them right. will, even after that one year officially ends, we've had AmeriCorps members join to be board members later and right. volunteers beyond and kind of it's like once you're in the PYD family you don't right. leave a lot right. of times and right. so yeah and that that's really great to see and really if youth and mentors are involved with multiple programs that really only can enhance their experience. Right. So we love when that happens. Right. And I think about as a, in a transition point of view as like when school ends, we don't want their life to end. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We want them to have like a community built around them. And this is something they can start while they're in school. Mm -hmm. So when school is over and they're either entering work or they're going to college or they're going to day program they have something that they've built before that ended so mm -hmm. not not their social life ending at school it continues on with mentoring with group with group work or yeah. you know, youth groups until you know those youth groups they maybe age out of but they're still their friends and yeah they have like a social life outside of it absolutely that's yeah. such a huge benefit and, yeah. and that's what it is nice having both the group network and that one-to-one -one relationship absolutely so in winding down how like do you know of other mentoring programs mm -hmm. around the state and then how can people get involved with PYD yeah absolutely great question so in terms of other programs one really broad resource is mentoring.org okay. so that's the national mentoring partnership and within that website you can type in a zip code okay and it'll 
populate whatever programs right. are near you so that and you can also kind of filter based on the type of program age okay. range so that's like the broadest resource for navigating okay. programs and then in terms of PYD's program the basic requirement for our community base is that um, mentees between the ages of 6 to 24 has a disability and lives within the 128 belt, which is the greater Boston area. Right. If uh, they are interested and fit that criteria, they can go to PYD.org and our intake form is under the mentoring tab. It's very easy, just a quick online intake form. And then from there, a mentoring specialist will be in touch to set up the mentee interview, which takes place in the mentee's home. And again, will be a chance for them to learn more about what the mentee is looking for. And then for our online mentoring program, that, so if you, you're not in the 128 program, uh, but you're between the ages of 18 to 26, the online program's a great fit because that's not limited by geography. And so they can just go to c3.pyd.org or our general website and they can directly sign up for the online mentoring program okay. and start that right away because that has a group model and network okay. and um, so both of those are great resources and yeah. we hope that we see some more people involved. Great and I'll put all of those links in the comment section of this um, pod, live stream. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having and me. Everybody, I really appreciate it. Everybody consider mentoring. Is it something that yes. can go hand in hand with MRC services, DDS services? They can engage in it while they're in school. Mm -hmm. So it's really something for you to think about. And we'll link all of the resources in the comments. Mm -hmm. And feel free to reach out to the Federation or PYD with more questions. And thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you.